Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. In case you're new to my channel, you're very welcome. I do only honest reviews. And today's contender is the Nubia Red Magic, which has just been released in India for about 30,000 rupees, which equals to about $420, which is way overpriced for what it is for two reasons. Now, I was one of the first ones who got the Nubia Red Magic about six months ago and I was enrolled in the beta software development of this phone. I have submitted my feedback to the original developers with a list of bugs which had to be ironed out. They've released two or three updates and suddenly they stopped the development whatsoever, leaving the phone with a little bit of bugs here and there. They're not vital, but they're just annoying. And the main problem is that the Chinese software is very, very different from the international unlocked version that you're going to get in Europe and in India, guys. Over here in the UK, they've tried to charge £350 for the base version of 64 gigs, and I believe 400 for the 128 gig version, which I do have over here with me. It's supposedly sold out in their store, and the only reason for that is that it, they just released their new flagship gaming phone, the Nubia Red Magic Mars, which is basically an upgraded version of this phone which runs the Snapdragon 845, has dual speaker setup, some advanced cooling and this and that, and gonna, they're gonna charge 350 for it and 400 for the bigger 8 gig version and they're gonna get 10 gig version as well. So these are the two main reasons that you shouldn't really buy this phone. The lack of software updates and the really poor stock Android that is running right now and the Nubia Red Magic Mars, which the official unveiling is going to be later on this month in January. So these two things out of the way, it's time to give you my full impressions and review of the Nubia Red Magic because I've been using it mainly for my decoration on the background of my videos. Guys, the phone is definitely quite solid, but it has some drawbacks. So my total advice for you would be, unless you get it really cheaply, there is no reason to buy this phone right now, guys. By the way, I've done a comprehensive speed test with the OnePlus 5T, can you imagine? Which I'm going to leave a link in the description down below so you can check it out, as well as a full unboxing. So let's get to the review now. The highlight of the phone is definitely the LED strip which is present at the back cover of the device which is made of very strong metal and the overall design is absolutely stunning. Bottom wise all the buttons are on the right hand side of the device. This is the gaming boost button which activates the LED strip. We've got the volume rocker as well as the power button over here. Which basically means absolutely wonderful button placement every time you decide to lock and unlock your device like that. Unless you want to use the fingerprint reader of course and the materials used are absolutely stunning guys. Check this out. Very sturdy metal all over the place and the overall design I really like what I see. You've got a unique fingerprint reader over here. The very nice camera, the flash as well. Over here you've got the Nubia logos. You've got these four grills at the back as well, but what purpose do they serve? A little bit later on in the video. Now in terms of security, unfortunately you don't have face lock of any kind, but the fingerprint at the back is quite good. Not one of the fastest in the world, but definitely good enough. So let's test it out. Just have a look at the reflection behind the phone guys. This is definitely reliable enough, but nowhere near as fast as the Huawei devices, for example. At the front, we've got this 8 megapixel camera over here, and let's check its qualities. Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. Let's test the cameras of the Nubia Red Magic quickly. 8 megapixel front fancy camera, 1080p maximum video resolution and no options for stabilization. So let's see whether we do have stabilization or not guys. Quick sprint over here. Okay. So yeah, you saw the photos from the front camera. It's actually 
quite good I would say apart from the total lack of stabilization and now the rear camera 24 megapixel and unfortunately the case is the same no stabilization whatsoever either on 4k or 1080p and the photos are kind of eh, average you definitely gotta install the gcam applications from xda or other sources in order to get some decent shots but anyway let's have a look at the videos and the photos okay guys so this is 4k from the back camera 24 megapixel camera can you imagine and uh, let's see if we have stabilization or not that's on 4k okay and now let's switch to 1080p okay guys so that's 1080p let's just do a quick sprint over here okay and let's quickly test the autofocus to see what we have okay autofocus it's a little bit on the slow side but anyways Now this is the camera application pretty much bare bones you don't have any functions whatsoever guys you've got the hdr over here no ai capabilities whatsoever no sliders for the stabilization as well when you go to the settings you've got the aspect ratio phase detection grid and in more settings you've got just an option to change the resolution and mirror on the front camera and pretty much that's it now the display of the phone is a regular 1080p panel is definitely bright enough in sunlight and you're not gonna have problems with this screen guys but it's just it's not gonna blow your mind away it's just a regular 1080p display which gets the job done when it comes down to audio you have the 3.5 millimeter jack present which gives a bonus point to the red magic now the sound coming out of it is pretty good it's not one of the best you ever heard but definitely decent enough which proudly deserves the 4 out of 5 on the vlogging spectrum audio score now what about the audio experience you might think that having four holes at the back you're gonna have four speakers but unfortunately that's not the case guys this is the only speaker that you're getting and let's see how loud it is actually it's quite loud but the thing is that you've got only one speaker guys that could have easily put at least two speakers over there and now what about battery life you've got a massive 3800 milliamp hours of battery and unlike many other youtubers i actually do use my phones in everyday basis so you can have a look at my usage over here and the battery life that i'm getting guys seven hours 18 minutes of screen on time this is my usage over here seven hours 11 minutes again my usage 8 hours 8 minutes my usage again 6 hours 47 minutes over here 8 hours 56 minutes that is a solid 9 hours with just 6% left guys over here 7 hours 38 minutes 9 hours 14 minutes yes I break this barrier and over here 7 hours 46 minutes let's see if I have any more that's about it guys so a uh, solid between 6 and 9 hours of screen on time in terms of performance Snapdragon 835 still performs admirably check this Antutu scores over here as well as when it comes down to gaming check this out what I'm getting guys 84 average FPS on the cast gel which means you're gonna have absolutely no problems with the gaming Okay guys, so let's talk about the software a little bit. The one that I'm running right now is not the stock firmware which you're gonna get on the Indian and European devices. This is actually the Chinese version which gets regular updates and it looks absolutely beautiful. Check these icons guys. These are specifically made for this phone and check the screen lock and unlock sounds. Check this out, how cool is that? As well as you've got gesture control, swipe from the middle goes home, swipes from the 
right hand side over here goes back and if you swipe on the left it activates the shortcut menus over here which is quite cool and everything but there's one major drawback without root you cannot get the google play store to work as you can see i've tried a bunch of different methods and when you try to go to the play store it just hangs like that so basically it's impossible to run the play store without root guys and having said that i bought one of the first indiegogo devices i cannot really go to fast boot because it's sort of locked so i cannot really root this phone so you're gonna get the phone with the regular software and this is the european and the indian software that you're gonna get the phone with and unfortunately in case you don't know of course you don't know that i was participating in the beta program of the software development back when the phone was on the indiegogo i had this phone for six months so yeah i was waiting to see where are they going to issue a final update because the version that i'm running right now is actually a final beta version of the software so a lot of the bugs are not being ironed out for example you can see the offset wallpaper over here you can't change the icons you can't get rid of this bullshit over here what else you can't really rearrange the buttons of course i've got a video on how to do that uh, without root but anyway you can't do all of those things out of the box guys you don't have the gesture control like the chinese software the only thing you've got is play store and the google play services working as intended and pretty much that is, that's it plain stock android no functions and no extras whatsoever yeah, of course you've got a game boost you've got a dedicated button over here on the side for the game boost and what it does it, it stops the um, applications from refreshing and um, it stops notifications and stuff like that basically nothing and when you press this button over here guys it activates the led strip as well we have different patterns of the led strip but pretty much this is the only addition of this software the other issue of the software is that you can't really stretch the video through the whole screen guys okay guys so it's time to wrap this video up let's have a look at the volume spectrum score of this phone and let's follow each category so i gave it five out of five in terms of design and build quality simply because of the absolutely amazing and sturdy back cover along with the led strip and the design of the fingerprint reader now in security category i gave it three out of five simply because the only method to unlock this phone is with the fingerprint reader no face unlock whatsoever at least on the international version battery life gets four out of five very solid battery life fast charging as well the screen gets three out of five simply because it's just a regular 1080p lcd and in terms of speakers it gets three out of five as well one single backfiring speaker is just not good enough although it sounds quite decent in terms of headphone output four out of five as well not the loudest one in the world but at least you've got a 3.5 millimeter jack the software i'm going to be very harsh over here two out of five simply because there is no development for the unlocked international version whatsoever and if you want to use the chinese version you gotta root your phone first which is a major disadvantage in this day and age 2019 the performance deserves easy 5 out of 5 absolutely no problems with the gaming and very smooth day-to-day -day usage out of this snapdragon 835 about cameras i'm gonna give two to the front camera because although it's decent enough 8 megapixels there are absolutely no extras whatsoever and there is no 4k recording as well as image stabilization of any sort the back camera is quite poor as well 24 megapixel i was expecting much more guys so definitely you have to use some third party software like the google camera apk or at least open camera you're gonna get a considerably better results but it very much reminds me of the poco phone camera every now and then you can get a decent shot but most of the time eh, the pictures are quite bad so two out of five as well and the overall vlogging spectrum score is 33 out of 50 which is pretty much in the middle along with the mid-range phones so you're basically paying a flagship price for a mid-range phone over here yes the battery life is very good but so does the Pocophone F1 as well. The OnePlus 5T is the closest phone which comes to my mind compared to this one and of course is better. 
the one plus six you can get it for about 300 pounds which is of course a better deal guys than the red magic uh am i going to get the red magic mars i really don't know considering their update patterns and unfortunately i'm not one of those guys who is you know always looking for an update but then this and that but overall i want to have a software without any bugs simply because it's not 2013 anymore it's 2019 even samsung provides a good software nowadays so it's a shame that overall a solid phone is ruined by some software issues and overall the camera is not good at all as well and there should have been at least stereo speakers on this baby so what is my recommendation until you get the phone really cheaply like 200 pounds something like that but don't pay more than 250 for it and the you know gaming aspect of it eh, all of those gaming phones they're not exactly gaming phones simply because they don't offer anything more than okay the led strip over here and pretty much that's about it guys so yeah that was my full and honest review of the uh red magic uh i'll definitely check out the red magic mars but i seriously doubt i'm gonna buy it so yeah that's about it guys thank you very much for watching and see you later adios